All right, so according to the Washington Post, uh, the Chinese spy balloon is a part of a vast aerial surveillance system, according to the Pentagon. And uh, they contribute this to, obviously now they found out that this type of balloons, like China calls them airships, but the fleet of spy balloons, they've appeared all over the five continents. I assume that means Asia, America, Europe, the oceanic area, it would be in Africa. This is all part of a larger intelligence operation from China, right? Uh, by the way, before we get further, make sure to uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And if you're on Gunjin World watching, make sure to follow our channel there and leave a comment for our second topic. So the balloon effort, according to the Washington Post and today by the Pentagon briefing, is that um, it has been operated for several years out of Hainan province, which is off of China's south coast. So let me show you, show you on the map where Hainan is. It's a little island province off of the uh, coast of China. So this is Hainan, this little island part here. This is Taiwan. And as you can see, Hainan sits on the South China Sea near Vietnam, Philippines, and uh, down here to Australia. So this island, uh, again, this has a lot to do with, with uh, wind patterns and so on. So I'm not so sure if this has to do with wind float, uh, flowing directions and all these things. But, you know, it's very close to some key areas to sp uh, spy on. Japan, which has a lot of the U.S. bases, the Philippines, down here to Australia. And if it goes around to India and all the way to Europe and back to the US, obviously the balloon that we saw went the other way around. So it went like this. It went from, if it was launched in Hainan, of course, the Pentagon won't tell us where exactly it was, it was launched from, but it sounds like they have the ability to trace it back to its origin. So it went this way, right? It went up through the uh, Bering Sea and then up to the Aleutian Islands and then into Alaska. Uh, actually went a little bit further like this. I think it went over uh, up here and then down. Uh, and then it went through, I think, BC, British Columbia, Alberta into Montana, right? So that, that was the route that it went. But uh, according to the Washington Post, again, this is uh, something that they've been doing, which is collecting information on military assets in countries and areas, emerging strategic interests to China, including Japan, India, Vietnam, Taiwan, and the Philippines. And uh, so... Based on this, uh, one military official says what the Chinese have done is taken an unbelievably old technology and basically married it with modern communication and observation capabilities to try to glean intelligence on other nations' militaries. It's a massive effort, apparently. Okay, and then the U.S. officials have been briefing other countries about this particular incident. And so, in other words, all of the sightings that we've had in the past, not just in the U.S., but over Japan, India, uh, Costa Rica and Colombia in South America. And then we heard about the four incidents, right? Three before, apparently in the Trump administration. Again, we still don't have 100% confirmation because they said those incidences were learned later on through intelligence anal uh, an analysis. So we don't actually know if the Pentagon, w w uh, what they knew at the time when they found these balloons, right? Anyways, but all of these are part of a Chinese spy balloon fleet. And it's, I say, a much bigger program than just the, the balloons, right? That includes satellite, uh, spy softwares like TikTok on your phone. And then you also have actual spies on the ground collecting information. You have the overseas Chinese po police bureaus. Uh, you have the intelligence gathering through certain compromised officials in the U.S. and around the world. Uh, and much more. Uh, all of that information feeds into China's data analysis through big data, which is powered by AI. Now, if you've been following the news lately, some of the most interesting aspects of the news is about ChatGPT, which is this like AI chat program uh, that Microsoft has incorporated into their search engine. But the ChatGPT program, you're supposed to get a registered account and you can go on, you can talk to them about it. The people that made it, it seems like to have made the program pretty progressive. Uh, when you ask them like things like, are you uh, conservative or progressive? He says it's progressive. And then when you ask him like random questions, like is Xi Jinping a dictator? Uh, he will say, or she, I don't know, will say no. Uh, so that's very interesting. But anyways, uh, the point I want to make is what, what China's been doing lately is they've been using, and they've been doing this since like 2017, 2018, using AI deep fake news anchors to promote pro-China footages or pro-China videos uh, online. 
right? So you can feed the, the fake news anchor something that, to talk about, and then they will say the script, and then they will make a video out of it. Uh, in some cases, they also control things like they can analyze the data that they find, right? China has been, uh, like they've been putting in billions of dollars to invest into AI programs and research because the huge amount of information that they collect from foreign countries like the US and other nations, uh, they're able to feed into that massive learning pool of resources of information. So the, one of the key issues now is debate on how, to what extent can AI be weaponized, especially by China, right, by the Chinese Communist Party. So if they do, which they've already done, is retaking those information, creating a perfect propaganda uh, machine, and then using that to kind of export it out to the West. And in some cases, the Chinese AI systems can be also exported to authoritarian nations like Russia, Iran, North Korea, used in their own uh, kind of ways to, against their own people. And AI is obviously also used in things like surveillance in China, right, against uh, any dissidents, uh, to also analyze their behaviors, to track their movements, Right? They also have all of those surveillance cameras uh, overseas and inside China as well. So all of that goes into this big Intel operation program. But the spy balloons kind of reveal something much more kinetic, right? They, they're physical balloons and they travel and it seems like they have the ability to carry explosives or even attack devices uh, like maybe something like an, a bioweapon agent uh, or it could be an explosive payload or it can even drop a missile, who knows, right? But according to the Pentagon, they keep sticking to this idea that it's, it's some harmless thing uh, and that now because they let it fly for so long, they're able to track more of them across the, the world now and uh, they think that that's a uh, win for, the, for, the, for that aspect. But um, so China, they la they're launching something, uh, this search engine like Google called Baidu this company here, they're launching their own AI system to rival ChatGPT, right? And uh, this is all part of that plan to basically expand the high-tech competition with the US. We know that semiconductors is one big one. AI is the next big one for the US and China to compete on because we still don't know so much uh, as to what the capability of AI can actually be when it comes to either using that in the civilian application or in a military sense, right? If we have AI powered military systems, which I believe China is already doing on a mass scale, uh, then that's very dangerous, right? That's directly connected to something like a uh, Sputnik moment, uh, but this time a much less visual. It, it, it's like, imagine if uh, the new Cold War is fought over high tech, right? Which it obviously is. The semiconductors are things that uh, you can actually see, right? They go into planes, tanks, and missiles. But the AI system is kind of—it's—it's it's like the neural network behind uh, anything that you want to do with the military sense. And so both China and the U.S. recognize that. All right. Now there's something bad, which is uh, the U.S. companies like Intel and and I believe some other ones here. Uh, since 2015, and I briefly talked about this last time, since 2015, uh, they've been investing in China's artificial intelligence. And this is according to, I think there, let me see, there's Intel, uh, it doesn't mention it in this article, but there's Intel and I think there's another company that do so. Um, basically, they poured billions of dollars into China to boost their AI programs. And people keep thinking that China and the US can work together on AI, which uh, I don't think is possible. Eventually there will be a line drawn there too. Okay, and um, so going back to the spy balloon situation, um, what I want to talk about is how does that kind of fit into a broader sense of the spy operations in the United States? Well, basically like I explained, the spy balloons, along with all of this other, uh, the any of the operations that they have on the ground, like uh, spies, either that's through TikTok on your phone, all of the information will feed into AI directly, which is then analyzed and learned so that it better formulates a plan to attack the United States, right? And what we don't know is what China has been doing to weaponize AI. And if the, it is doing so, um, there are some signs, right? We saw the... Uh, this video here, this is from China and then this is from a Chinese state media. 
they've adopted to use AI news anchors since like 2018. And uh, this AI news anchor is able to report anything that they do, but this is just one part of it. Uh, what happens when AI is able to kind of read learn itself and then develop better programs of AI that can actually be even adopted better for the military. So all of these things are pretty scary. Uh, but overall, I think the goal of China's intelligence gathering is to have multiple levels of it uh, from this uh, here. Let's go to this article. Uh, it says, while most of China's long range surveillance effort are conducted by its expanding military satellite array, PLA planners have identified what they consider to be an opportunity to conduct surveillance from the upper atmosphere at altitudes where uh, f commercial jets fly using balloons and that fly between 60 to 80,000 feet or higher. Um, and then it says, the, officials, uh, the official flatly rejected China's assertion that the airship moving over the United States was a, was a weather balloon blown off course. This is false. The, the official said this is a PRC surveillance balloon. So the idea that it's, uh, it's not military, it's already out of the picture. It is 100% military and it's definitely being used as part of the surveillance program that we're talking about. Um, and then just the last point here, the amount of data that we have now on the Chinese balloon is still pretty, I think, uh, significant considering now we probably know how we can reverse track it and what exactly is stored in those devices to further understand what China wants from the United States. Uh, in that case, I think if the US, especially the Pentagon, can do something about defending against these threats, then we'll be better off. But we'll see about that. Anyways, that's it today for today's live stream. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thanks so much. And make sure to, again, subscribe to our channel and uh, leave a comment what you think about today's video. Thanks so much for watching State of Politics. I'm David Zhang. We'll see you next time.